Hello everyone. Welcome to our fourth webinar in 2016 on Julie Stage. Today's webinar features the new analysis program for Julie Stage called Julie Stat. Hi, my name is Song Soo An, Associate Professor at Kachon University in Korea. I presented the webinar uh, twice before in this year. And today, I would like to briefly mention uh, Julie Stage at the beginning and move on to Julie Stat. To start with the CHR, CHR stands for Cell History Recorder. Julie Stage is a live cell imaging system, but Julie Stage can do more than just live cell imaging system. Other values such as easy video editing and basic analysis are included in uh, with the Julie Stage machine, where you can do the confluences easily. We want to put Julie Stage into new extended and higher category as a cell history recorder, which means that we can the Julie uh, CHR uh, can include live cell imaging and many functions and values for the researchers. To show a few examples, this is a migration live imaging of wound healing assay. It demonstrates a key function of an instrument, both recording cell movements and history over time. And this is the experiment from Hubeck cell line monitoring for 18 hours. And we can see the cell migration and healing the gap area, which is a uh, wound between these two uh, layers of cells. And let's see a little bit more about the detail of the Julie stage. First of all, it is not about the checking out the endpoint uh, like microscopic experiments. It is for the recording of entire experiments from the beginning through the end of the cell uh, experiments. And secondly, you can set up a multiple wells as well as even multiple cell positions within one well. It means that if you are using 96 well, well plate and set one point in each well, you can get 96 live cell video images at the same time. If we change the parameter for the three points for each well in 96 well plate, 96 multiplied by 3, then you can get up to 288 live cell videos at the same time. Julie Stage has bright field, green fluorescence, red fluorescence, and dark P for your, the measurement of your cells. There are other applications with Julie Stage in which you can get the live cell imaging and information from Julie Stage dedicated Julie Stage website called juliestage.com. And here you can find ver uh, various live cell image videos for those applications in, from the website. And finally, Julie Stage is a compatible with the many different types of plates, dishes, and slides. It works perfectly inside of an incubator for as long as you would like to perform your experiments, not to mention that it will work outside of the incubator as well. And now let's move to the main topic of today's webinar, Julie Stat, cell analysis software, which, are, which is freely available for all users. Julie Stat has four main functions. As you can see, start with automatic growth curve analysis, where users can make automatic growth curve and obtain raw data from the experiment. And secondly, excuse me, is an automatic wound healing curve. Also, you can obtain the uh, growth curve and wound, wound healing curve as well as raw data in Excel format. And thirdly, attached cell counting option will give you the cell counts uh, based on your parameters in fluorescence or the bright field. And you can also follow over time. And lastly, whole intensity level can be measured for bright field, GFP, RFP, and DARP. Now let's start the uh, Julie Stat software. I would like to show the major the operations with the software with you today.
Once you click the Julistat icon, you will see this uh, window. And then in this screen, you will see two options at the top left-hand corner, the file and help. And the file, if you click it, you have uh, two choices, close or and a, a data pass. If you click the data pass, it will guide to where your experiment is stored. So you can also change by clicking browse button, and then a window will open uh, where you can select the folder where your, your experiment are located. And for us, it's Julie Stad, uh, October of 2016, and the stat sample. We're going to click OK. And then the, in the, you will see the images on the left, and on the right upper corner, you will see the change data pass, listing of, of various experiments in that folder you selected. And here we'll be showing the four different options, attached cell counting, wholesale intensity, gross curve, and wound healing. And the bottom of that, there is a uh, uh, window showing the what kind of experiment you have performed with the, which kind of plate. In this case, we have performed experiments in 96 well plate, and on the right side, it shows the location of the area where you met, uh, made a measurement uh, in that well. And uh, next, it shows overlay channels showing the bright field, green fluorescence, red fluorescence, red fluorescence and darpy. And in this uh, case, we did not perform the experiment in DARPY, so DARPY is not clicked on. And on bottom of that, we have a project information where our project information shows various parameters, such as object power of object lens. In this case, we use object lens power of 10, 10x. And then it shows the total experimental time. And intervals, we interval of 50, and the cycles. So showing that we perform the each interval uh, 30 times. So if you click the detail button, now we're going to click, a new window will appear showing them all the details of the experiment, starting from project name, uh, object lens, time, interval, and cycle, and so on. OK, we're going to click X and close this window. And next is that uh, edit function. So if, we, if you click edit button, then you will see the function, uh, the parameters for the bright field, green fluorescence, red fluorescence, and uh, DARPY. And you can uh, change the parameter by moving the uh, button, or you can change the parameter by uh, using the arrow bars, clicking the arrow bars. And also, you can use the default uh, parameters, and it will go back to the default parameters. Or you can save your parameter. And once you are done, click Done button. And then uh, on the bottom left, you will see the experimental uh, various arrows of playing your videos over your experiment. So if you click, and then uh, it shows the, all the recorded uh, the data from your experiment. And you can fast forward, and or you can uh, go fast to the end by clicking this button. And then now, uh, we'll first show gross curve analysis by, we're going to click the gross curve here, and then we're going to click uh, select analysis, and this window will open showing the four different kind of, uh, four different options. So we're going to click gross curve analysis. A new window will open. On the left, it shows images, uh, and also uh, top right hand corner it shows what kind of plate we have perform the experiments. And then within this 96 well plate, we perform the experiments in A1 and B2. So they are showing in the red button, for, or the kind of whitish button. And then we can also change to uh, move to B2, and it's showing the images from B2 on the left. We're going to go back to A1. OK, on the right side, it shows the location of the area where we made, made the measurement in that well. Uh, and then there's option for bright field, uh, green fluorescence, and red fluorescence for the various observational channels. And underneath, it shows in the option area that you can find the sense, you can control the sensitivity and the background. So you can optimize your the image uh, for the analysis.
And on the right side, it shows the A, B, C buttons. We're going to click A. Currently, we are at A, option A. You can click B or C. It changes the background and sensitivity. And depending on your experiment, you can uh, move manually by clicking or uh, moving the uh, bars. Or you can also use arrows for uh, changing the parameters. Uh, we can uh, Now we're going to go back to the A parameter, which we obtained our experiment. And then uh, we can apply this. And then it select the uh, cells for the analysis. OK. And then we're going to make a graph uh, from the, our data. And we're going to click the, the well of choice. Or you can also collect multiple wells. But due to time, we're only going to use the A1 well. OK. And then bright fill. And then we're going to apply. I'll click the Apply button. And it will calculate the confluency from that well over time. As you can see, the times are increasing, and intensities are also increasing at the same time. And it show it's uh, automatically drawing the graph. And if you want to save the data, save the analysis, say OK. If you are satisfied, you can uh, cancel and go back and change the parameters and come back again. Then uh, at this time, we're going to uh, click OK. And showing the uh, data coming from the bright field, and it also include the green fluorescence and red fluorescence. And this shows a graph. And if we double click, it goes back to the smaller the, uh, graph. And if you double click the smaller graph, uh, it will enlarge the graph. And also, you can obtain the raw data from the graph in a in a table. If we're going to click here, it shows that. Uh, uh, the bright field uh, cell image uh, cell data for in terms of percentage or the area for the bright field for green fluorescence. If you move move the slide, and you also you can obtain the data from the red fluorescence. We are going to go back to the graph, and now we're going to click the A1 again. We're going to export this uh, graph as well as raw data into graph format, JPEG format, uh, as well as raw data in Excel formats by clicking export and then we're going to select the well of choice in terms of and you can also click or just click uh, bright field green fluorescence red fluorescence as you uh, as you want and then we're going to apply and this uh, folder window will appear and you can designate a folder let's say we're going to designate a, a stat sample nuclear this time and say okay and then automatically the data is exported into the file that you designated to. OK, this is about uh, how we uh, perform the data analysis for the growth curve. And now we're going to go back to the other options. And by clicking back, the choice. And then it's asking for whether you want to uh, stay or continue. And we're going to say OK. Now we're going to go move into um, wound healing by clicking on the data from the wound healing. It shows that the brief uh, information about your data. And we're going to select, uh, click select analysis. Again, the, uh, uh, this option, this window will uh, appear with all four options. And we're going to click wound healing. And then the left side, you can see the images, the data, image data you obtained from your experiment. You can also move the arrows to see the, whether your experiment was uh, performed correctly or not. And on the right side, it shows what kind of well, what kind of plate you have used. In this case, uh, we use 24 well plate. And uh, within the 24 well plate, we perform the experiment for the demonstration on A1 cell. So that's why A1 cell is clicked. And on the right side, it shows er where the area within th that well uh, was measured. And in this case, we measured only with the bright field. It shows the option for the bright field parameter sensitive for the sensitivity and the background. And you know, as we, as I previously mentioned, that you can also change with the uh, preset parameter. In this case, we're going to use uh, A. And then we can apply this. 
and then it, it can you can see that how the program selected um, the cells uh, and of confluency from your experiment. You can see that in the bright field is reached the 97.5. And if we go back to the experiment, previous you know in the, from the beginning, and apply, it selected only the area where we start uh, we lay the cells down, and then as we move, then we can. And clicking the apply button, we can see the increasing in for uh, bright field confluency. And then we can obtain the graph and the raw data by clicking make a graph. We're going to click the make a graph. And then this window will appear, and you can click the well of your choice. In this case, A1 for us. We can apply this. And this will calculate the confluency from the beginning until the end of the experiment. As you can see, that is. Um, on the background that we can see the increasing of uh, the confluency and reach the saturation. If you if you are satisfied with the data and uh, click OK for save. And we saved it. And this is the graph. And again, you can double click to you know make it smaller or double click to make it bigger. And we can see the raw data in a table format by clicking table button. And you can see the bright field the confluency uh, over time. And uh, in terms of, you can also observe in the percentage over time. And let's go back to the graph. And then we can export this data into the uh, JPEG format for the graph and Excel file for the raw data by clicking Export button. And then it will, this window will appear. And you can click the well of your choice. And then in this case, we only measure with a bright field. Um, so bright field option is indicated and click the apply button it's automatically uh, well folder window will open again we're going to choose the sample nuclear um, uh, folder and then we're going to say uh, click OK for the ex automatic exportation of your data uh, this shows about the, uh, how we are analyzing wound healing data now we are going to go click the back button and then say OK and then we are going to go for the attached cell counting. So this option, this uh, option allows the user to count all the cells by the the parameter you uh, set, or you can use the default parameter. Uh, click the data, and then we're going to click the select analysis. And this window will appear. And this time, the third option is uh, attached cell counting. So we're going to click that. A new window will open. Uh, on the left side, it shows image of the data, and on the right side, it shows the what kind of play you have performed your experiment and the well where you performed the experiment. Uh, we performed the experiment again A1 and the B2, uh, and you can see. And if you click the B2, it shows different image. So we're going to go back to A1 again, and right side it shows the which area of the well that we obtained the images. In this case, around the middle of the well. Uh, for we can also choose bright field, green fluorescence, and red fluorescence. I'm going to show. I'm going to work. I'm going to work with the green fluorescence. In the option, you can also use the background control uh, using the preset uh, background uh, parameters, and also you can use the default gating. So using the preset default gating for the experiment. You, if you just click, uh, unclick. Uh, those options you can uh, actually manually change your settings uh, in this case we uh, we have set the uh, intensity from 0 to 255 you can change the this uh, fluorescence intensity parameter by sliding of a button this button as, and then if you click it it turns green and you can move around as, as well as upper parameter you can also move around like this and if you click set, and you can see the intensity of the cells. And if you uh, click count, it will only count the cells uh, as indicated with the parameter. If we click the background control, which is the default, and then we're going to count. And then it select the uh, cells according to the default, count, default parameter set by the uh, program. And it's showing, uh, showing the 34 cells uh, with green fluorescence. And let's see if it works with the red. And we're going to use a default parameter and default gating. We're going to count again. It's counting the uh, red 
uh, cells with red fluorescence is showing the, in terms of number wise 20. And if you this uh, unclick and then if you move the parameter and then count and then you know uh, in this parameter it didn't change the number of cells and if we go back to green fluorescence we can also the, uh, manipulate with our uh, manual the selection and set and set and then count and we'll count the cells that according to our set parameter in this case we set it for 0 to 50 and also you can uh, select the cells by the cell size so from the intensity we're going to click the cell size option and then cell size option uh, uh, is, is uh, currently that apply maximum is click so if we unclick we're going to do the set and count And it select the cells according to cell size. In this case, uh, uh, cell size was selected between the zero and the 3,840. If we bring it down to uh, selecting the small cell, smaller cells, and we're going to do the set and then count. You can it will count the cells, and you can see the decreasing in number of cells depending on the uh, your uh, selection okay and now over the time because if you click this uh, arrow bars it shows the how cells grew over the time or changes uh, changing in cell population over time and you can make a graph of your uh, raw data by clicking make a graph it shows the well uh, wells where you perform the experiment and we're going to click a1 or you can also both uh, click both wells but this time, due to time for the calculation, we're only going to click A1. And green fluorescence and red fluorescence, we're going to apply. And it's counting this how cells, number of cells change over time. And you can see the uh, increasing in time, and the counts are varying depending on uh, the experiments. And if your computer is really fast, and this will the, uh, the, you know give you the faster counting. And if your computer is a little bit slow, then the, it will take a little uh, longer time. Since my computer is, it seems to be slow, uh, so it's taking a little bit more time than we anticipated. It's almost done. And if you are satisfied with the graph, and say OK. And you can see the, how the cells change. Green fluorescent cells, uh, cells with green green fluorescence uh, uh, GFP is decreasing over time but the cells with RFP is uh, growing over time and you can the this double click and you can see that in the small uh, the smaller graph if you click again uh, you can see the larger graph we can see the raw data if you click the table button you can see the green fluorescence intensity uh, over time and you can Okay, and red fluorescence over time. And if you if you go back to graph, you can export your data by clicking export button as I previously mentioned, and then you can select the well of your choice, and then you can in this case we click the green fluorescence and red fluorescence, and click the apply button, and then this uh, uh, folder of your choice, this window will open, and you can click now again we're going to click. Uh, stat sample nuclear 
and then say uh, click OK and automatically the files are exported into that folder. So this is about the uh, sample uh, uh, attached cell counting and we're going to go back to the, our forts uh, and we're going to click OK. Uh, go to the whole intensity level option again and this uh, and if you click the experiment, then on the left side you can see the images from that experiment and the wells. Uh, in this case, we performed the experiment with the green fluorescence, red fluorescence, and DARPY. And even in this window, you can see uh, just click the green fluorescence only showing the uh, RFP and uh, DARPY, and only showing the DARPY. And it shows bright fill as a default. You can see the green fluorescence or the red fluorescence. And we're going to click uh, select analysis. This window again will appear and we're going to click whole intensity level. A new window will open. Uh, this uh, window is a little bit different, uh, different than before. Uh, on the left side it shows the what kind of uh, channels where we use the bright fill is, as I mentioned, the default. But in here, we're going to analyze for just green fluorescence, red fluorescence, and dark P. And underneath, it shows the uh, line graph over the cycle. On the right side, it shows the what kind of plate we have used to perform the experiments on which well. Uh, in this case, we use a six well plate, as you can see here. And then uh, we perform the experiments in A1, A2, A3, three wells. And on the left side, is uh, the uh, line graph is showing the data coming from uh, only A1. If you click A2, the um, the line graphs are showing the well uh, data from the uh, A2. If we click A3, the line graph uh, is showing from A3. And also, as you the notice that the cell images are also changing depending on which well. And also, you can click the multi-select, which means that you can select more than one well. Uh, and this time, it's showing the A1 well on the left, as well as image. And if you click, double-click uh, for A2, then you can see the duplicate lines are appearing on the line graph, as well as the, this. Uh, there's a mixed image in the image area. But the highlighted uh, well with the red are showing in the bold line, uh, and if we click, if we click A2 now, then the bold line changed from the A1 to A2, and also if you double click A3, you can see that there are three uh, blue lines and three red lines and three green lines here, and then the selected well is showing in with the bold line, and on the right side it, again it shows the where we obtain the image. Okay, this is the well-based analysis, and we can also move to the cycle-based analysis, where we can see the actual, in terms of, a, uh, for instance, bar graph, we can actually see in numbers, intensity uh, in numbers. So this, if you click the cycle-based, we can move the which cycles by clicking these arrows on underneath, on the bottom. Okay, depending on the cycle, we can change. Uh, we can see the changes in fluorescence intensity. Okay, and on the uh, left upper corner, we can see the this uh, values came from the green fluorescence observation. Observation, and we can click red, and you can see that the fluorescence intensity changed for the red fluorescence. We can change the. Uh, we can click the arrow bar, arrow the button. We can see the changing in the. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. The in terms of intensity, we can also uh, click DARP. We can see increasing in intensity for the DARP, uh, and then we can see the values for each cycle that we observe. Again, uh, this uh, this is the whole intensity level. It gives you average int intensity from each well, uh, and we can export our experiments by clicking export uh, button. Uh, at this time, in this window, export button is located at the top, not at the bottom. So click the export button, and then we can click one well or the multiple wells by clicking, and it will turn into red for selected wells. And we can also just click or click green fluorescence or red fluorescence, and we're going to click all and uh, click the apply button.
And then again, this folder window will open. We're going to select uh, the stat sample nuclear folder, and all the data will be exported into this folder saying, OK, click OK. OK, that's about uh, uh, all the options we have with the Julie stat. And next, I'm going to show you how the uh, export files uh, look like. OK. OK, this is the uh, raw data and the graph data we obtained. Uh, we exported from Julie stat into that folder uh, that we selected. On the uh, first gross curve analysis, in the, we'll show you the file in JPEG mode. You can see that the bright field, green fluorescence, or red, for, uh, red fluorescence. Um, uh, and then their values are located underneath in the Excel format. You can see the which, kind, which uh, format or the which channels we have used for observation. In this case, uh, bright field, green fluorescence, red fluorescence, we did not observe in DARPA format. And the which well was selected. In this case, you can see in the background of the graph, A01. Also, you can see A01 in the Excel file. For the wound healing analysis, uh, you can see the, uh, the graph at the top for the bright field. And you can see the which well we, are, the, uh, we ob obtained the measurement. And then underneath, in, in the Excel file, you can see the bright uh, green fluorescence red values from uh, bright field, green fluorescence, red fluorescence underneath over time. And then you can also see the which well the data came from. And also, the thirdly, the cell counting analysis will give you this graph when you, uh, when you export your data, uh, indicating the which well and green fluorescence and red fluorescence. And under, in the Excel file, you will see the values of, uh, of the intensity over time, uh, in f indicating uh, by green fluorescence or red fluorescence and RP or bright field. Since we did not measure in these two channels, then we did not see any values. But we observed the values from the, for the green fluorescence and red fluorescence. One is a counting uh, number. One is the area of the cell. And uh, the lastly, the whole intensity level analysis will give you this kind of information. First, start with which kind of uh, channel we have used, GFP, RFP, or DARP. Underneath, it shows the cycle, how many cycles we have performed the experiments. On the right side, it shows the, what was the minimum or maximum intensity of the fluorescence, which, which were the parameters that we have to select uh, for the intensity analysis. And then, underneath, it shows the well, which well that we obtained the data from, which in this case is uh, AO1, next AO2, AO3, and so on. And again, underneath the uh, GFP, there is a uh, another the, uh, uh, data file for RFP, showing the cycle again, and then the well uh, number, and there the data for each well over the cycle, as well as the DARP data. OK, that's about it for today's uh, uh, webinar on Julie Stan. Julie Stat program is freely available, so please write to um, the sales at uh, nanoantech.com or you can visit this Julie Stage dedicated website for Julie Stage, juliestage.com. Once you go in, you will see these four options. One is overview of Julie Stage, what kind of uh, uh, how we develop Julie Stage, and what kind of experiments you can perform with the uh, Julie Stage. And again, uh, and if you click the application button, it will lead, it will introduce you and guide you to various applications uh, the users in the world have performed, and we have added into this option uh, in this uh, folder. And also, there is a related product you can buy with the Julia Stage to expand your experiments. And also, there is a important uh, last but very importantly, there is a support button. You can ask any questions. You can also the, uh, submit uh, your experiments to Nano and Tech uh, for the Julie stage. So that's about it for today's webinar. Again, thanks uh, and uh, thanks for coming to today's webinar on Julie stage, especially for the new software, freely available, Julie stat, for your uh, easier analysis of your experiment.